If you went to the Big One show or watched our video that showed the best bits of that show, you would have seen me talking to Tommy Pickering about a new brand called Nitro. It's just a start really, so you're going to hear a lot about it. We've got lots of plans in the future coming out, but this is our first range of tackle that we brought out on market. Once everybody had left the show, I went back in to find Tommy Pick and asked him if he would let me have some of the new Nitro rods, especially the ones that he's been fishing with, that I could take out and live test. And today, I've got those rods with me, and we're here at Earlswood. We're on Engine House, which uh, is a great place to come and test any rods because you're going to get some bites. And I'm looking at a 12 foot feeder rod that's just that little bit different than the normal ones. So why do I think these rods are a little bit different? Well, firstly, let's just have a look at the rod itself. Uh, it is called an Airzon, and this is a 12 foot method feeder rod. And unlike many feeder rods that I've looked at recently, this one has quite a soft, almost through action, but it's it's not floppy or soppy. It's, it's quite firm and that makes a change because we get quite progressive carp rods. And this is, look, this is a method feeder rod. It's got enough power in it to cast a method feeder, but it hasn't got that inherent stiffness that a progressive rod has, which is a little bit different. Now, the other thing that really did attract me to, and I'm sure that uh, sort of Tommy Pick had a look at this, you have to look, that, that gloss black blank with red whippings, there's little touches of red on it. Also, you've got a matching airs on reel that's the same color scheme. It looks a million dollars, but price-wise, it's a million miles from a million dollars. And the rod, and the reel are both well under a hundred quid. So to just net this. So it's been a little while since I've been to Earlswood, but uh, it doesn't look like it's changed any. It really is almost a bite of a chunk, but a great place to come tackle testing. So I started off the session casting wise. I think the rod is rated to around about 50 grams, but I'll check on that on a bit, but I'm fishing with uh, 30 plus grams. I'm clipped, I would say, at about 50 yards. I've got an eight pound shocker on and five pound mainline, and it is absolutely whizzing that out uh, and is causing no problem at all to me, even though there's a bit of a head on wind. I'm chuckling to myself because my cameraman is basically a master of the English language and will not stand for any mispronunciation. Now, the this rod is spelled A R Y Z O N. Tommy Pick pronounced it Arzon, <laughs> and my cameraman tells me it's basically Horizon, and uh, I'll have to stick with that, but I'm finding the spelling of it and actually saying Horizon to be quite difficult. <laughs> get a closer look at that fish play in action which is that is quite unusual i mean it's very forgiving but there is a little bit of casting power there that for a sort of a normal run-of-the-mill method rod that you know you haven't had to cast too far with or you haven't got to use huge feeders that's that's very fishable and easily usable i mean i'm not fishing with a particularly big hook or heavy line but you could actually you could get away with using that for skimmers without any problem at all. They're absolutely perfect for these F1s, that really is. Uh, I thought that the F1s might have been a little bit bigger this year, but they look more, they look much as they did when they went in. But uh, there's a guy fishing around the corner and he tells me that he's had a couple of four pounders. So fingers crossed for that moment, but they are still all immaculate fish though. As we're waiting for another F1 to appear, Let's have a look at some of the features you get with this Horizon commercial 12 foot method feed rod. Firstly, comes with two quiver tips. This is the 12 foot version. It comes with a one and a two ounce tip. They're quite springy, but they're perfect for method feeder fishing because you don't want glass with a method feeder. It flops about and a lot of time the fish are hooking themselves against the weight of the, of the tip anyway. These are anodized lightweight guides. They're high quality but they're not like sea guides that we see on so many rods now, but they are oversized. So if you come and you need a shock, you know, to fish with a shocker as we are today, they're absolutely perfect. 
it's a 30 ton cloth or 30 ton carbon cloth all the way through the rod whereas we see so many rods with a 30 and a 40 and we and they put the the uh, higher tonnage carbon in to keep that bit of progressive action in the rod that bit of extra stiffness not needed with this rod it's got a flawless uh sort of almost semi through uh fish plane action and that 30 ton cloth is the exact right material for this type of rod super secure screw down reel seat a very long cork and eva handle with a flattened arm lock area and that that just sits nicely against the forearm so you don't get any roll when you're playing with the fish um, i haven't caught anything big enough at the moment to see what this rod is like under sort of real stress or duress but my gut feeling is that it would be absolutely fine casting wise i think nitro say 60 to 75 sort of yards or meters that'd do it for me i'm not having any problems with what i'm doing at the moment oh we've definitely feels like this is a slightly better fish and i've actually interestingly i've upped my hook bait by a little bit to a big slightly bigger bait because i'm finding that i'm catching all the same size f1s but this feels like a little bit bigger but it is putting a bit more bend and that really is a pleasing semi through bend it's putting slightly better bend in the rod now we've got a really nasty crosswind coming down the lake and let me tell you there is a way with feeder fishing that you can sort of helps you you, you can't do away with it completely but the issue is, is that is that the line bellies out and then you get a big bow and then it, you know it's no, you're not particularly direct and there's line all over the blessed place but the idea is to hit the clip quite hard and then follow it forward so there's a straight line as you can get between you and the feeder so it's hit the clip quite hard but then push the rod forward and follow it down and that and it doesn't really give the wind chance to catch the line and pull it round, you know, to, fo to form a sort of a, a big amount of slack. So it does help a little bit. So if you're in wind, it will bear that in mind. And that's, uh, yeah, it's a tiny bit bigger, but not that much bigger, but we'll carry on. And, um, you know, it's turning into quite a, quite an interesting session. I mean, when Tommy Pick talked to me about these rods, these commercial rods are the ones that he's used all winter. Uh, and you might think that, oh yeah, Tommy, because he's sponsored, he'll go straight for the most expensive rod they have. Not so. Tommy's using these commercial Horizon rods because these are the rods that he likes to use. And I think that that little bit of added softness uh, is what Tommy's looked for this winter in his rods. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't argue with his choice at all because every rod in this range, it's a six rod range. And you've got, actually, you've got a nine foot, 10 foot and 11 foot carp feeder and then the 12 method feeder rod. But they are all of a similar ilk fish plan wise. But I can see why Tommy's chosen them with the sort of venues that he's done his winter league campaigns on. And uh, they are though, every one of those rods is way under a hundred pounds. So we're back in that sort of budget end of the market. But I, I am just, again, I'm simply blown away by the quality of a rod that not so many years ago would have set you back, oh my gosh, you know, it would have been over 200 quid. I mean, you, you just can't believe the sort of the quality of a rod that you can get now for under a hundred pounds. And looks wise, like I touched on at the start, I mean, the fact that there's a matching reel to go with it and that that in itself, I think this is the largest one, this is a 5,000 size. Uh, I quite like that with a 12 foot rod. Some people will go for a 4,000 and there isn't, as I've spoken about before, there is no industry standard when it comes to reel sizes. It's sort of what suits. You know, good reels, a bit like good football refs. You know, if you don't notice them, you don't know they're there. They're clearly doing a very good job for you. It's got six ball bearings and it's got a six to one gear ratio. So it's pretty quick. Get a shallow aluminium long cast ball. And I've got about 300 yards plus a shocker on there last night. An S-curve oscillation system when I've had no problem at all with line layer. It looks really nice. It's got a multi-disc adjustable front drag. And again, it's not, it's pretty precise. 
and we quite like that. Twist free line roller, which is here. And again, I've, I'm casting quite away and I've had no spin ups at all. So we're quite impressed with that. There's also two line clips on here and it's got an oversized hollow bail arm, which will withstand an odd knock or two. And like I said earlier, you know, the best reels are the ones that you don't actually notice. And it's been faultless during this life test. And now we've got another fish on. So I think I've caught more than enough fish to, to have an opinion. And uh, yeah, I've nothing I don't like at all about it. Uh, I like it, I like the, I really do like the look of it. I think first and foremost, what would attract track me to it is it's got this sort of transparent finish on a gloss black blank and I think it looks really classy match it with the same colorway as the real and as a as, as a pairing it really does look the business like I say it's just been a very pleasant experience this is not a distance rod but for most you know of your commercial stuff which let's be honest you're not having to throw that far uh, it would be absolutely fine, you know? And I don't doubt that there is enough power there to handle much bigger fish should you need to. So, all in all, uh, Tommy Pick was right. The future's bright, the future's nitro.